All right, kia ora and welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to have a quick look at the pieces of software that we're going to be using in this course. And as I've said in the course information, we have two choices. One is to use MATLAB, which looks like this icon here. And the other is to use Octave, which is, you can kind of think of it as like a free equivalent. So in this video, I'm going to run through a couple of the key things in each one of these. Essentially, I'll do one of them first, and then I'll provide a link in the description so you can jump straight to the other one if that's what you want to have a look at. Essentially, it's going to do the same content twice in a row, looking at the two different environments. All right, so I thought we'd start off by using MATLAB. So MATLAB is kind of, is kind of the granddaddy of scientific computing software or modern scientific computing software. So you can purchase it on from the MathWorks website and you can get a student price and that gives you a license to use MATLAB for academic use. All right, so when you open MATLAB up for the first time, it should look something like this. The main things to know at the moment is that you want to basically be working inside a particular folder. I've made a folder here called code inside my 160.102 directory. And right in the middle, we have this command window where we can start typing in commands. All right, so the first couple of weeks of our course is focused on vectors. So let's look at a couple of things that we can do with these. So let's say I want to make a vector in R3, which is called A. I can type in A equals, let's say it's 5, negative 2, 3. I put semicolons in between entries because they indicate a new row. A new row. So I now hit enter. I now have this vector called A, which has components 5, negative 2, and 3. Okay, you can see it's also good to point out this other area over here which is called the workspace. All the variables that MATLAB currently knows about, you can see what they are in this workspace here. So I could double click on that. Um, and in fact, I could edit it in this works in this variable editor that pops up if I want to, or I can just redefine it with the command like before. So I'm just going to close that workspace editor again, and I'm still on my command window. All right, so let's just grab another vector so we can do some operations on them. So if I've got a vector 1, to one for example then now you can see that's popped up in the workspace and I can now do some operations on these vectors so it's really useful when we use MATLAB in this way as a calculator so kind of the most basic level is to use it as a like a scientific calculator you can put command useful commands in so let's say I want to find the dot product of a and b I can just go dot a b and it will tell me that the dot product is four um, I could do something like add A and B together, or I could subtract A and B, and you can see these results pop straight up. Okay, so um, it's quite useful to be able to see which commands have already done. So if I just go into my, I think it's my layout box, um, I'm going to also dock this command history tab here. So I go layout, command history and let's go docked. It's a really useful thing to have available to us because we can see all the previous commands we've typed in um, in this list down here and we can say for example redo one of them by double clicking on it so I could just let's say I want to make B again uh, I can just double click on that command and it will redo it. All right a couple of other useful commands if I want to scale and multiply I could go three times A there it goes if I wanted to do a cross product you may not have learned, depending on when you're watching this, you may not have learned about this one yet, but we can do a cross product, and etc. So just for these sort of basic calculations, it's extremely useful. One other useful command is norm, and that will uh, calculate the length or the norm of the vector. So the norm of my vector A, that will just be 6.1644. There are some extra decimal places there as well. Notice it doesn't give you back the square root expression, it just gives you back a dismal approximation to whatever the answer is. And also worth remembering that actually internally MATLAB is saving about 16 decimal places here, not just the four that you can see. Okay, so um, what else can I tell you about MATLAB? If you want to clear all this away, we've got two commands that you should know about. First one is CLC. All that does is it clears the command window. It doesn't take away any of the variables that you currently have. So I typed in CLC, and you can see that my variables, they're still there. All it's done is made it, it's taken away the visual distraction and deleted what I've typed so far. If instead I type in clear, what clear does is to clear away the variables from my workspace. So it's now I'm back to fresh again. 
Okay, now let's say I want to go and type those in, do those commands again, or maybe I want to take a break and pick this up again tomorrow. I don't really want to just be relying on my command window here. So the other key idea is that we can type in commands into a file and save them for later. We can run them again later. So I'm going to hit new script up here. And that will open a thing called the editor. It's just like a regular text editor, a bit like notepad or text edit. And I can put some of these commands. I'm going to grab those three. Control C for copy. Control V for paste because I'm on a PC. And they will now be in my editor. And I can save that as a file. So let's call it playingaround.m. And you can see that it's put this file called playingaround.m in my folder here. But I'm going to rename that to playing around in MATLAB because we'll make a similar one for Octave shortly. And it won't like my dash, so playing around in MATLAB, that will do. Okay, and so now I've got this code, and how do I want to, if I want to run the commands in it, I can just hit this triangle for run, and all three of those things will be visible in my command window now. Uh, also, you see, you can see my A and my B and my dot product. If I wanted to store this for later, I can create a new variable called dp, for example, and I can store the result of the dot product in there. I've just hit run again, and you can see now I've got this variable dp over here. One last thing, when you've got lots and lots of commands, you don't necessarily want heaps of stuff echoed out to the command window. So if I put a semicolon on the end of any line that does output, then what MATLAB will do is it won't print it out to the command window, right? So let's just, I'm just going to clear everything off again. So clear and CLC. I've now put semicolons on and I'm going to run it. You can see that nothing comes out in the command window. However, these variables have been created. And so if we're writing complicated programs, this is usually what we do. We don't usually want to see every intermediate calculation that we do on the way. Okay, a couple of more key things before we kind of bring this to a halt. Um, trigonom if you were doing trigonometry, if you want to say find cosine of something, angles are always in radians in MATLAB. So if I want to find cosine of say 40 degrees, I would have to do cosine of 40 and it'll convert to degrees times pi over 180, and that will give me the cosine of 40 degrees. So what actually went into cosine is in radians, and if I want to find the inverse cosine of something, I use the command a cos, that's short for arc cosine, which people sometimes call, is what people sometimes call the inverse cosine command. So it'll be a cos, let's say I'll do arc cos of 1, and it gives me 0, because I know when my angle is 0, my cosine is equal to 1. Notice also this built-in constant pi is just sitting there in MATLAB, so I can just do pi, and there it is. Okay, now there are more things to talk about, um, but I think uh, we've probably done enough for now. Oh, one last one. If you type in doc, then you get the documentation. And the nice thing about MATLAB in particular is that its documentation is really good. So if you want to find out more details about some of this basic stuff, um, there are heaps of interesting resources in the Getting Started with MATLAB. And I encourage you, if you want to go a bit deeper into some of these topics, to work through some of the tutorials here. It's kind of light and fun and not... And yeah, if you want to get a bit better at it, that's the place you might go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to close all this now. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for Octave. All right, if you're just joining us, um, we've skipped ahead perhaps. We've just gone through MATLAB. We're now just going to show you how Octave works. So Octave, you start it using that icon there. Notice there's a GUI in brackets. They're actually, when you install Octave on your computer, you get two different versions. Um, one is the GUI version, and sometimes, in fact, my computer doesn't seem to, oh, what am I typing? I'm typing the wrong thing, Octave. You get two options. There's the GUI and the CLI. Sometimes the CLI is good. CLI is short for command line interface. So if I start Octave CLI, I just get this. It's like having the command window only without all of the graphical bits and pieces. But we're going to focus on the GUI option right now. And one little weird bug I've seen, when you first install Octave for the very first time, sometimes when you, st when you start it, you lose these controls off the very top. So if it's the first time you've installed it and you get stuck, just pull this thing here and that will sort you out. Okay, so what is Octave? Well, essentially the first thing we, well, the first 
important thing about Octave is it's basically got this command win window where we can enter different commands into. So I want to do some work with vectors because that's what we're looking at at the beginning of this course. So I'm going to do 5, negative 2, 3. I want to enter this vector in R3 which has three entries. I put in semicolons to show that each entry wants to be on a new row and that's given me this vector here. Notice there's also this workspace. In fact, I'm going to maximize my screen so we've got a bit more space here. Reshape it a wee bit. Don't need quite so much there. So I've got this workspace A, a variable A here, where I can see this variable I just entered. I could even double click on it and I can edit the variable in this variable editor if I want to. I could make that a 2. But generally speaking, I personally don't use this very variable editor very much. I just tend to define things um, in my command command window. So notice I'm also now being dropped into a different place. If you ever get a little bit lost and you're in a pain that you don't understand, command window is back here down the bottom. Alright, so let's grab a second vector. I'm going to go B is 1, 2, 1. Now I have a second vector. And the powerful thing about Octave is that I can do mathematical commands on these things. Like for example, I can calculate the dot product of A and B using this dot command here. Depending on where you're at in the course, you may or may not know what the cross product is yet, but we can do a cross product of A and B just with the cross command. We can do an expression like 3A plus 2B by just typing in something like that. Notice I need to put times in. I can't just write 3A. And that will just do the calculation straight for me. This is really useful if you want to check some results on something you're working on or just to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Okay, what else is useful? If you want to know the length of a vector, there's the command called norm. So if I want the length, let's do, let's do the length of b. I know that it should be the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 1, should be the square root of 6. So if I type in norm b, I get 2.4495, um, which is approximately the square root of 6. Notice Octave actually stores more significant figures than this. Uh, by default, it usually stores about 16 significant figures for a result. It doesn't store the actual square root itself. It's not symbolic like some things you might have played with before are. It just stores a numerical approximation to the square root of 6 to about 16 significant figures. Okay, so that's dot product, cross product, norm, adding, subtracting, all kind of works the same way, A minus B. Now, notice that every time I do a calculation, if I define it to some variable, Let's do that dot product again, and this time we're actually going to give it store the result in a new variable. The variables themselves end up in this workspace. That's like a list of everything that MATLAB can currently see. Okay, so that's my that's cool. Um, if I want to start again to start fresh, there are two commands that are worth knowing about. First one is CLC. What that does is it clears the command window. Okay, notice my variables are all still there but I can't see it and my command one has gone back to fresh again. The second one is clear and what clear does is it will actually kill everything that's currently in the workspace as well. Okay. Now, notice I've also got um, down here a list of all of my previous commands in this command history box. That's really useful. If I want to go and do one of these commands again, let's say I want to get my vector A and B back, I can just double click on the command and it will be executed in the command window. If I want to maybe save these results to come back and work on them another time, maybe just relying on this command is not the best idea. So I'm going to copy these, Control C, and now I'm going to go to the editor where I can paste these lines into a new file and I can save this. So I'm going to save it, save file as, um, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it in 102. Yeah, I've got a folder called code here. I've already made this in MATLAB, so now I've made a similar one in Octave. Now, both MATLAB and Octave use the same files. I could, and it's exactly the same. So now I've got this file here, and if I want to, I can run it um, by hitting the Save File and Run button. Now, the way it's currently set up, I don't have the command window visible at the same time, so we can move things around. But let's just run this file. Um, if you get this change directory, it means you have to be in the in the directory that your file is stored in. So I'll just go ahead and change my directory as it's wanting me to. And then in my command window, 
I can see the output from running this file. Okay, so this file would basically just store a whole bunch of commands in it, and what it means is you can pick this up later on, hit run, and everything will be executed. Now when I ran it, um, all of the intermediate output steps got um, displayed. So let's just clear this all away again. So clear and CLC. Often we don't want to necessarily see all of our intermediate calculations, especially if they're really complicated. So if I put a semicolon on the end of each line, what that does is it suppresses this output. So if I hit save and run again, notice there go my variables, they've still been calculated and appear in my workspace, but nothing gets output to the command window. So that can be really useful if you don't want this whole pages and pages of numbers to appear on your command window. All right, so hopefully that gets you enough to get yourselves underway. Um, we will give wrap this up for the day. So don't forget, Octave or MATLAB, doesn't matter which one you use. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll leave it here, and we'll see you next time. Okay, see you later.